Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with clam chowder shell pasta. That's right, we might have stumbled upon a new category of recipe, which would be pastas done with sauces inspired by famous soups. And I'm not sure this technique would work with just any soup, but man, did it work great with clam chowder. And no, I didn't invent this, and I've seen this done before with linguine, but I didn't see anyone using shells, which for many reasons I think is the perfect pasta choice. But no matter what you use, the first thing we'll do is cook up some bacon, which we've sliced up, and we'll place that in a pan set over medium heat. And we want to cook this stirring until it's pretty much crisp. And even though we could do this faster, the reason we're on medium is because while we do want our bacon to pretty much fully render and get beautifully browned, we don't want the sugar and other goodness from the bacon to start burning onto the bottom. So we do want to be careful our heat is not too high. And if I've said it once, I've said it a hundred times. When it starts to look foamy, your bacon's almost done, homie. Okay, so when you see all those little tiny foamy bubbles, that means your fat is rendered out and your bacon's pretty much crisp, which is exactly what mine's looking like now. And once it does reach that stage, we'll go ahead and pull it off the heat and we'll transfer it into a strainer to let the grease drain off, which of course we can use to fry things like cabbage and potatoes and eggs. And that's it, we'll simply reserve that bacon until needed at which point we'll place that pan back on medium heat and we will toss in a chunk of butter and some diced onions along with a nice big pinch of salt. And what we'll do is cook these onions stirring for about five minutes or so or until they start to soften up and turn translucent. And while that's happening, if we want to multitask, which we usually want to do, we can go ahead and open up and drain our canned clams. And for this, I decided to use both whole and chopped. All right, that way we can pretend we use some freshly shelled ones which would of course work great if you have them. And you really don't need the whole ones. You can just use all chopped. So that's up to you. I mean, you are after all the Poseidon, of seafood to Poseidon, but I thought the combination of the two worked out quite well. And pro tip, don't forget to put a bowl under the strainer, since we're gonna use this juice, along with a bottle of clam juice, so that we have about two cups of liquid for our sauce. But anyway, we'll reserve our clams in the fridge until needed. And by this point, our onions should be getting soft. And I know it looks like they browned, but they didn't. That's just from the caramelization from the bacon on the pan. And that's totally fine. And then what we'll do at this point is stir in about a tablespoon of flour, which we will cook for about a minute, just to take off that raw starchy edge. And this little bit of roux, as we call it in the business, R-O-U-X, that's gonna help thicken up our sauce a little bit and give it a little bit of body. And as soon as that flour has cooked for about a minute, we can go ahead and dump in our clam juice which again is a combo of a bottle of clam juice and the reserved juices from the cans. And we'll go ahead and take a whisk and stir that in. As usual, making sure we scrape off any of the goodness off the bottom, which in culinary school we call deglazing. And then what we'll do is raise our heat to medium high and we will wait for this to come to a simmer. And once that is simmering, we can go ahead and add our diced potatoes as well as some diced celery, which of course are two very typical clam chowder ingredients. And absolutely key in this, and I know you wouldn't think potatoes would work with pasta, but they really, really do. And then we're going to want to let this simmer for about five minutes before adding our cream. And during that time, I like to add one sprig of tarragon, plus a few shakes of cayenne just to stay in shape. And no, we do not even have to chop the tarragon. All right, we could just toss it in whole like this, and it will flavor the sauce a little bit. And then at the end, we can just pull that out. But anyway, like I said, we'll let that cook for about five minutes, at which point we can reduce our heat to medium low and move into final production. And by this point, our veggies should be just about tender and the liquid will have thickened up a little bit. And what we'll do next is dump in our heavy cream along with our reserve clams and almost all of our cooked bacon. Okay, you can dump all of it in if you want, but personally, I like to save a little bit to crumble over the top and also maybe to nibble on a couple pieces in secret because as you know, secret bacon is the best bacon. But either way, we'll go ahead and stir that in and we will simply let that simmer gently for about 10 minutes, at which point it is ready for our cooked shells, which reminds me, so our timing is right. When we add the cream and clams and bacon, we should probably add our pasta to our boiling salted water, since that usually takes about 10 to 12 minutes. And ideally, we want our pasta cooked and drained when our sauce is ready. And that's it. Our pasta is cooking, and our clam chowder sauce is gently simmering. And once we think our pasta is cooked long enough, We'll go ahead and drain that very well, since we do not want to thin out this sauce with a lot of extra water. 
So make sure you give it the old shake a shake before you dump this in. And even though the sauce is not going to seem super thick as we start stirring all this together, you'll see thanks to the starch on the outside of the pasta and the starch from the potatoes, especially if you've overcooked them a little bit like I did, that is going to help tighten everything up beautifully. So we'll give this a nice stir until our shells are evenly coated, at which point we'll turn off the heat and we will just let our shells sit there, absorbing all those beautiful flavors for about a minute at which point we can add the last two ingredients, which would be some freshly chopped Italian parsley and a little bit of Parmesan cheese. Oh yeah, the real stuff, Parmigiano Reggiano. And we'll go ahead and stir that in. And by the way, if you're one of these culinary fundamentalists that don't think it's ever okay to add some cheese to a seafood pasta, you're probably not watching this channel anyway, so never mind. But if you are, please add it, because it tastes really, really good. And speaking of tasting, our last official act here will be to test this to see if it needs more salt, which depending on how salty your bacon and clam juice was, you might not need any, but you might, so make sure you check. This is not something we can guess at. And that's it, once we're happy with it, we'll go ahead and serve it up, ideally in a nice warm bowl. And once that's been spooned in, I almost always like to add a little more Parmesan to the top. Plus, as promised, we will crumble over some of that bacon we reserved from earlier, Assuming we haven't eaten everything we saved, which trust me can definitely happen. So please, if you want to finish this properly, you will have to exercise some self-restraint. And that's it, I finished up with one last pinch of parsley, and my clam chowder shell pasta was ready to enjoy. And that, my friends, really was amazing. Okay, I am a huge fan of clam chowder, and it's definitely one of my favorite soups of all time. Plus, linguine and clam sauce is one of my favorite pasta recipes. So as you might imagine, I just loved everything about this. Although one thing I might do a little bit differently next time would be to add the potatoes with the cream so they don't cook quite as much. Okay, some of the cubes did make it through in one piece, but a lot of them did fall apart. Although that did add a little bit of nice starchiness to the sauce, so I'm not positive that was a bad thing. But next time I might cook them a little less. And obviously you can do this with any pasta shape you want. But for me, these shells are the absolute perfect shape for not only holding on to our delicious sauce, but also to provide the perfect place for our bits of veggies and bacon and clams to settle. And besides that, this is a pasta based on clams. So just on that alone, the shells make the most sense. But no matter what you use, I really do hope you give this a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.